seconds and counting. T-minus 15 seconds. Guidance is internal. 12, 11, 10, 9. Ignition sequence start. 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. All engine running. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. This is the city, Seattle, County of King, State of Washington, Seattle, USA. In all this wide, wide world, there's no other city quite like it. Seattle, it's my city, my home. Mine and that of over half a million others. Seattle's our city, our home. We like it. The church started in our home. I remember my parents talking to all of us and saying, we're praying to start a church. We know that God wants to start a church here. North Shore exists because Jesus has decided to do his work in the world through churches. We started our first service April 23rd, 1969. We had 23 people. We uh, met in the uh, living room of a uh, home just east of here. We met in the little house around the corner. It was just the beginning. Well, I was uh, eight, eight years old when we started to have a Bible study in our home, and my parents began praying that uh, we could start a work on the east side. And then people gathered together at my parents' house and we continued to pray. That's how it started, through prayer. I think God just started it. it I mean, the Ristos just heard his voice. They did what he said and it came about. I was reading through some of the um, annual reports and the original vision was to reach the area for Christ. And, that vision hasn't changed. The heart's desire is for others to come to know Jesus, and I think that has been a key part of North Shore's history, too, and what has kind of been the glue that holds North Shore together. It was all about family, and that was the core of what North Shore was. It's about relationship and building that community. We are a healthy church. We're a safe church. We're a church where people can come and find Jesus. We often talked about this being like a hospital, where you come if you need to, if you're wounded, and get, get some healing. I think when you have a healthy church, people walk in and they have this sense of, I'm home. North Shore exists because the people, Jean and Linnea, had a vision and a passion that Christ would be the light in Bothell. And basically the heart of North Shore from the get-go was missions. Where's God in action and we want to be there. North Shore had unity and spirit in mind. Mm -hmm. And when a church has that within it, it just gives it the power that's needed to succeed. And I just feel like, in a way, it's only just begun. North Shore is still here after 50 years because throughout the history of this church, Jesus has always been at the center. And when you have that kind of consistency with Jesus at the center, you can have changes in leadership, whether it's changes in senior pastor, changes in staff, changes in elders. People can move in and move out of the church, but when you put Jesus at the center, then you're going to always move in a healthy trajectory. And I've seen that at North Shore from the very beginning even to now. Just the fact that um, we're able to stay on this site, to grow on this site, to be able to plant daughter churches, you don't do that by accident. I mean, that is clearly the Holy Spirit moving. I was 24 years old when we arrived uh, in Bothell, and I still remember seeing the crazy little sign come for a day or for a lifetime. 
And I had uh, I, I, my first event in Seattle was really having uh, lunch with Jan Hedinga, this 35-year-old pastor. And at that lunchtime, uh, we began, he began envisioning a ministry together. We had uh, six back-to-back three-year fundraising campaigns just to build and pay for these, these buildings. And it was, um, it was not a burden. And you see it through all of our church plants. I mean, how many different churches have been established from this one piece of property? And uh, God's, yeah, there's just something supernatural about, I mean, this physical piece of property. I arrived out in Seattle on December 2nd, uh, 1979. Jan picked me up at the King Station. I was the youth guy here for 18 and a half years and we had all the Oregon Coast trips and we had all the Montana trips and we had all the Coke talks and we had all that kind of stuff, but God just worked in and it was an exciting time. I became a Christian here. I was baptized here. Uh, I got married here. I had my kids here. Uh, so all the major milestones in my life um, have, have been here. The impact that North Shore had on me as a teenager, it was that is where I really learned what it meant to be a disciple of Jesus. It's just been in North Shore's DNA to be there for the community. The church has been like my second home. What's amazing is my kids are growing up in the same atmosphere, which if you're going to be in a second home, it's probably the best place you can be. <laughs> This church inspired me to continue uh, serving the Lord in, in ways that uh, I may not have done if, uh, if I didn't have the inspiration here from this church. North Star has impacted my soul. Um, I have a really good perspective, a better perspective of eternal values that I try to carry out on a daily basis. I think it's God, the Holy Spirit working in our community to continue thriving and the people at our church as well in making sure that uh, we pass these things on to the next generation and to people in need. I think that's very important to us and I think uh, we live it out. What God is doing is, is too important for us to just do the minimum. We're going to do the maximum. And that's why um, the people stretched. Is they, they caught a vision of Let's do something that is beyond the normal. North Shore has this amazing history and legacy of reaching out, of serving our neighbors, of pouring into our communities sacrificially, helping everybody come to know who Jesus really is. I think it's really valuable for us to celebrate things like this. We celebrate the fact that God has been in this place. What a tremendous privilege. I, I just have nothing but thanks. I'm so grateful for the years here. North Shore, congratulations. Have a great celebration. This is a city, Seattle, County of King, State of Washington, Seattle, USA. In all the wide, wide world, there is no other region like this, Seattle. It's my city, my home, mine and that of over three million others. Seattle is our city, our home. We like it.
So I think it goes without saying that a lot has changed in 50 years. A lot has changed. 50 years, it's an amazing milestone, and it's worth celebrating. And sadly, so many churches don't make it to this milestone. But on a day like today, I think the men and women who took that bold risk, who gave so much to start this church, would want to remind us that the real question we face is not what did God do over the past 50 years, but what might God do over the next 50 years? A few weeks ago, there was an app that went viral called Face App. It allowed you to take a picture of yourself and literally add decades to your life. In a way, you can imagine yourself 50 years from now. So I thought we could do that with some of our staff just to see what our staff's going to look like in 50 years. So here's our worship pastor, Brandon Schumann, right now. And here's Brandon in 50 years. Still leading worship, this guy right here. Here's Wolfgang right now. Here's what Wolfgang might look like in 50 years. Wow. I don't know if the years have been kind. So here's me right now, and here's me in 50 years. Yeah. I don't know. I feel like I'm doing just great over the years here. So truth is, we have no idea what the next 50 years will bring, but we know a lot about what's happening in our context right now. We know that Seattle has been the fastest growing large city in America over the past decade. It's also becoming one of the most diverse cities in the country. We know that development is up, and home prices are up, and technological advancement is up. But you know what else is going up? Brokenness and marriages and families is up. Rates of depression and anxiety and kids and adolescents is up. Loneliness is up. In the 1980s, under 20% of the population said they were lonely. Today, that number is closer to 45%. Here's another trend that's going up, and it may be the most sobering of them all, the trend of people leaving the church, disaffiliating from faith or Christianity altogether. Based on current trends, just based on current trends right now, over the next 30 years, the overall Christian percentage of the population is predicted to drop from 73% to 59%. And here's what's worse, 35 million young people raised in Christian homes are predicted to disaffiliate from Christianity over the next 30 years. 35 million. That's 1 million per year. And that's not just a number. Those are our kids, our grandkids, young people in the room. That's you. But here's the good news. You see, when the world looks at its work worst and things may seem bleak, that's always been historically when the church has risen to be its very best. But we're going to have to keep giving and take some risks and take some steps of faith, just like the team that started this church 50 years ago did. We need to recognize that the world around us has changed, and the church is struggling to know how to present Jesus' message in a way that's accessible and understandable in our day. We need to be more intentional in how we love our neighbors. Just love, listen, care for, invest in our neighbors, many of whom know nothing about Jesus or the Bible, care nothing about church. We need to be be more purposeful in how we invest in the next generation. The times, technology, it's changing faster than we can keep up with. And we have to put ourselves in those shoes thinking, what's the next generation seeing and learning and how are they growing? We need to be bolder in calling out injustice and showing compassion. We need to plant more churches, but in newer, creative ways. We need to utilize and leverage technology to make the message of Jesus accessible to people who are spending more and more in their life on a screen. See, the methods, well, those are always changing. But we will use ever-changing methods to share that never-changing message that there is a God who so loved this world that he sent his son Jesus to give his life on a cross to make the joy and freedom and peace of God available to people like you and people like me. Friends, this is the greatest opportunity the human race has ever known. It's like a man who found a buried treasure in a field and said, I will give everything for that. Yes, we've come a long way from that house on 100th, but the stakes, friends, are just as high as they were 50 years ago. The need for us to surrender our lives, to seek God's help, to give everything we have is just as urgent right now today as it was on that first Sunday. 
because so many people in our midst are still lost, still hurting, still still broken. So many lives are on course for an eternity without God, and it's not because they don't go to church. It's because they don't know the love and grace of our Lord and Savior, Jesus. So, in a world where people don't go to church, it's time for the church to go to them, to come together for them, to give our lives for them. So, this weekend, we are kicking off a ministry campaign called Together For. You've seen the t-shirts. Because the people who started this church, they didn't come together based on what they were against. They came together based on what they were for, the good news of Jesus, authentic community, Uh, compassion for the hurting, overflowing generosity. And 50 years later, God is still calling us to be a church together for our neighbors and the next generation and those in need. God is calling us to be a church together for Kirkland and for Bothell and for Kenmore and for Woodenville. God is calling us to be a church together for foster kids and families in need and the school district and the city government. A church, by the way, that is divided over what it's against is spiritually powerless but a church that is united around what it is for, well, God can do some pretty remarkable things with that kind of community. Just think about it. 50 years ago, it took just 39 people and a commitment to be together for to start all of this. So just imagine what could happen if 2,000 of us committed right now to live that way today. Just imagine what God could do at a hundred years. You know, at a at hundred years, Lord willing, uh, let's see, do the math. I need to be 110. <laughs> uh, but I, I hope that they, they, they're saying about North Shore, that this was a, a church that walked with God all of those years. It's our children that are going to do the next 50 years, Mm -hmm. our grandchildren. So we've tried to impart to our grandchildren a vision of what could be done. What we've done is just the beginning. You guys now have a platform to take it much further. Although things will probably change in different ways, like technology and the way people communicate and how church may be done, I just, my hope is that the word um, stays consistent. Carry that torch through because I've got great grandkids and I want them in a world that loves Christ. We'll probably be watching it from the moon, maybe <laughs> maybe some other place, but the, uh, the message will be the same, I know. A hundred years from now, it will be to lead people to Jesus Christ. The people don't change. In the same way with God, God doesn't change. That's just what I was going to say. Let's see, another 50 years. Actually, I, I, I think it'll probably be very similar to what it is right now. A core group of people like this dedicated to, dedicated to serving the Lord. You know, it would be just a thrill to just come back and see the gospel still going, Jesus still proclaimed, people still surrendering, baptism still happening, discipleship. Just keep it rolling. Keep it rolling until Jesus comes back. <laughs> God isn't finished with North Shore yet. You know, there's been a, an incredible uh, run the last 50 years, but, um, you know, we look forward to the next 50 years now. When we started this church, did we know what we were getting into? Oh, yeah. no, no way. No. We did not know. Uh, did we know what we were doing? No, <laughs> we didn't know what we were doing. But we, we sought God, and we wanted His will to be done. Yeah. And that's exactly what worked out, yeah. His will, yeah. and His way, and His timing. Let's all stand and sing this in faith together. Sing, I've seen you move.